Have you ever seen that uh, DMT experiment where they shine the laser on the wall? Yeah. What did you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's interesting. I think it is. I I'm not persuaded that yeah. the code of the simulation is being <laughs> revealed through this process. I mean, I'm I appreciate the attempt yeah. to assess something like that. I think it's right. as an idea. I think it's very cool. I've gone to the website of the guy mm. uh, who's at the forefront of this laser DMT laser examination technique has some weird stuff like eating chocolate and viewing it through a glass of water. I mean, the, oh really? I haven't seen that one. The, the obvious issue is that if you're taking a drug that causes visual hallucinations in order to see this otherwise invisible phenomenon, that it could very well be a product of hallucinations. Right. Yeah. Right. But the fact is like, like the, the interesting thing is you're giving so he he says that i think hundreds of people have done it mm -hmm. and reported to him seeing the same exact code that he describes which is this like sanskrit looking Jap japanese katakana style matrix dripping code that exists behind this laser beam when it's projected on a wall and like I don't know if there's, I know like, I haven't done a lot of DMT, but I know people explain that DMT is, uh, a lot of people see very similar things when they're on DMT, like different, like similar patterns. Some people see these elf things, but there's nothing else that I've ever heard of that is consistent across a lot of experiences similar to this code that people are explaining they're seeing. And I mean, one of my questions when I asked him, I was like, I was like, is it an issue that they're watching your documentary and seeing this code on the wall and then they're trying to do it themselves and they're kind of confirming what they already were expecting to see? Is that a problem? I don't know. <laughs> I would say it is a problem. Yeah. It's, it, but it's a common problem. I mean, yeah. same thing with the machine elves, as you said. And this has been studied from pretty much the beginning of <clears throat> psychedelic research. Uh, Heinrich Kluver coined this term form constants and he was very interested in this mm -hmm. idea that people's visual distortions or hallucinations under the influence of mescaline appear to have certain themes like a honeycomb pattern or a spiderweb type pattern or uh, like a sort of tube type pattern or whatever mm -hmm. and now you hear people describing often seeing Alex Gray type imagery is that because many people who are interested in psychedelics have been exposed to yeah. Alex Gray imagery is it because Alex Gray was able to capture some kind of some kind of characteristic that is maybe just present in the psychedelic experience because yeah. we have similar central nervous systems and and other visionary people. I mean, one thing about Alex Gray is that he's using a lot of motifs that have also been explored in religious artwork as right. well. So it's not <laughs> as if he's the, the only person to um, ever explore these types of images. Uh, they, they do obviously have a a particular resonance with people that use psychedelics. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's this interplay between human biology and psychology and art where yeah. it's all, yeah. It's all, yeah, it's all interwoven. Yeah. Yeah, Gallimore was explaining how um, throughout history, there has been multiple documented uh, documents of people taking different psychedelics and uh, explaining how they saw code, code on different psychedelics throughout history um and various studies so but i don't know if any of them were were as similar as this dmt thing you know it's interesting to me that like if the if this dmt is actually stripping away this sort of brain filter this brain filter hypothesis how you have like these filters that filter reality and the dmt kind of like breaks the filters away so you're sort of seeing the brain is exposed to more sensory input and uh if if that's really if something like that is actually happening and then you're bringing like a laser into it like that's that's a super interesting experiment and if it's like if the laser is acting like a microscope 
in the visual field or in the brain, it would be, it would just be, you know, what, what does that even mean? You know, if people are all seeing this, is this some sort of like epigenetic thing in the human brain that is happening because we're combining these chemical, we're, we're taking in these chemicals and, and exposing ourselves to a certain light frequency or like, are we seeing the actual matrix? Are we living in the fucking matrix? <laughs> I would definitely bet against that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, you know, that would be the last explanation that I would go for, which is not to say that yeah. it's impossible. Right. But when you're kind of creating the flow chart of possibility, it's usually good to start at the most likely scenario. And mm. then if you can't explain something with the most likely scenario you then go to the next most likely scenario yeah so the most likely scenario in this situation is that a combination of suggestion expectation yeah and the visual hallucinations that are produced by dmt are causing people to see characters that they are interpreting as being similar but they can't really say that with certainty because nobody's able to yeah. take a snapshot yeah. of whatever it is that they're seeing right and it's obviously a better story and it would feel better if you saw the same thing as someone else mm -hmm. than something that was subtly different or totally right. different and what even are these characters if you draw them are we really totally sure the very fact that they're unrecognizable and not in a language that we speak gives right. them a lot of latitude to be different um and then there's also just the kind of uh, language that we use to describe things that are unfamiliar. Um, you know, if you see something that is weird, what do you say about it? If you see lights in the sky, do you say that's a UFO? Do you say that it's gods? Mm. Do you say that you try it, to fit it into a box that, that it's you witches? Know. Yeah, right. it's it's dependent on your culture and yeah. what language you use to describe the unfamiliar and the inexplicable yeah so when you look at earlier psychedelic experiences i don't think i'm aware of the word alien being used very frequently um people saying this seems alien right. uh, often i do see descriptions of things being like egyptian or associated with other cultures um but i don't think alien in in the like 19 early 1960s type stuff. Now you'd see that more frequently because aliens have become a much bigger part of our culture subsequently. Mm. Um, and the same thing goes for the way different indigenous groups conceptualize these things, which yeah. are very much based on their, like I, I would imagine that if you were to go to Peru and do this experiment, the matrix line thing might be less less frequently encountered as an explanation sure. because the matrix i mean it, it kind of depends on who you talk to i'm sure there's people mm -hmm. indigenous uh cactus users who have also seen the matrix it's a pretty popular movie pretty good movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. but but assuming that they haven't seen the matrix mm -hmm. i have a feeling that that and the the current popularity of <clears throat> simulation hypothesis yeah. thinking yeah. wouldn't be um wouldn't be the first explanation that they go to. Hold on, let me crack open <laughs> this fresh can of uh But I don't, I don't mean to be a hater on this kind of thing. Like I do, yeah, no, I, I I do find all that stuff very interesting and um <sighs> so good. And careful observation of the world is how you discover things. So it's like I understand how you could look at you know, someone you know, looking at a laser through a water glass or whatever and say, like, this is fucking <laughs> this is like uh, <laughs> like this is ridiculous but it's like you probably could have i'm sure there were people that would have said the same thing about early microscopists like looking into a droplet of water and saying like what are they doing mm. like oh they think they see little like organisms in this droplet of pond water like yeah. it's crazy well i did it i tried the experiment and it yeah. was also the first time i ever tried dmt and um i didn't see the code oh i saw i saw millions and millions of of little gears rotating and connected just all spinning like behind the wall hmm. no code at all oh interesting and i was expect i watched the documentary like like the day before or not the doc the the teaser for the documentary the day before i did that and so i was like looking for the code 
but I couldn't find it. All I could see was these gears spinning. But maybe, um, maybe I didn't get high enough. Maybe I needed to do more DMT to see it. I don't know. Brilliant. It was my first time ever doing it. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs>